Hey, it's Eric G. Around the House is sponsored by Baldwin Hardware. For 75 years, Baldwin Hardware has been known for its first class quality and craftsmanship in door and cabinetry hardware. As an alumnus of the Baldwin Hardware Design Council, I can say I have seen the details and quality from design to the finished product. If you're looking for a new style and old world craftsmanship, I can tell you there is only one Baldwin Hardware. Check out what would look great in your home at baldwinhardware.com. It's Around the House. Back in February, we visited with Fortress Building Products about decking and steel decking. Let's talk to them about using something else besides wood to build that outdoor deck. But it is something exciting for us. We've always been able to build. We've had contractors from day one taking our framing components and making custom pergolas. Yep. Well, we've launched now over the past couple months pergola kits, so a single skew, everything you need for oh. a 12 by 12 pergola, um, for example. We've got three different sizes. That, yeah, pre-cut, pre-drilled. One skew, you open it up, it's a, let's call it a three by three bundle. Everything you need to build that pergola right now. So. Dude. That is amazing. It and is. there's no thought to it. You're just going to follow the directions, put it together. <laughs> it's made to go that way. 100%. So as Jeff mentioned, like we've had contractors using that steel framing to build turbulas for years. Right? So we call it kind of the limitless design options. When it comes to remodeling and renovating your home, there is a lot to know. But we've got you covered. This is Around the House. Welcome to Around the House Show. This is where we talk everything about your home every single week. Thanks for joining us today. We are having fun here at Design and Construction Week, International Building Show, Kitchen and Bath Industry Show, as well as the National Hardware Show. Let's see how much stuff we could pack into the Las Vegas Convention Center. I am down here at the Fortress Building Products booth. Let's get some introductions here, guys, so the listeners know what the voices sound like. Go ahead, Jeff. Start right, it out, brother. So thanks for having us. We're excited to be here. Uh, my, my name's uh, Jeff Schultz. I'm the vice president or senior vice president of sales and marketing at Fortress Building Products. I've been with the company for 12 years, so it's been an amazing ride for us. And nice. it's funny to say, down here for the week, it's going to take you a week just to go through all the different halls because this is, I would say, from an excitement level, the best, I mean, the most well-attended IBS show that I've seen probably in a decade. I mean, it, it has been packed, which is great for us. You think about um, some of the people talking about, oh, the economy this year, this and that. Well, it is packed because people are looking for opportunities, are looking for innovative products. And so it's uh, it's been awesome to see the crowds that are here. So This is like the Super Bowl of construction. A hundred percent. And I mean, even last year in Orlando, it was, it like, was oh, decent. Is, I any, low is anybody expectations. here? Is anybody here? But this year is by far the busiest I've seen in 10 years easily. Yeah, so. it's absolutely incredible. Right. And uh, yeah, it's yesterday trying to get out of here was its own mess. Right. Oh, you know? yeah. It only took, uh, we, we went to Caesars from here and it took us, uh, I think, 42 minutes to go two and a half miles. It was great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's wild. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And my Uber ride was like $52 with search pricing. <laughs> yeah. So for me to go just over to the Palms, right. I was like, awesome, guys. Yeah, thank gonna, you. Thank you, Las Vegas. Yeah. Okay, next introduction. Yeah, Tim Sandland. I'm the director of marketing for Fortress. Been here for just about two years. Nice, so, Tim. I've been in the industry with building products for over 10 years. So ah. love this show. Love the people that attend it. Uh, Absolutely. And thanks for having us. Cool. Let's talk about Fortress building products because you guys have your hands in so many different things and quite frankly do it really well. But you're just not that one trick pony either. Yeah. So we, we talk about the total solution. We look yeah. in your backyard. Um, we're the total solution there. So we do steel deck framing. Yes. We do it with that same material. You can do a steel pergolas as well. Oh. And we'll get into the benefits of that. Yeah. We've got decking, fasteners, railing, fencing. Am I missing anything? Cladding. cladding. Yes, yeah, so decking that goes in cladding. And then, of course, lighting and accessories. Yeah, see, it's like, guys, if you don't know who these guys are and you're thinking about building a project, doing a project, whether you're a homeowner or a contractor, these guys have a lot of solutions that we're going to talk about today. Yeah, and, it, and you know, what's great about it, too, is it's not only residential, so commercial. So we put a big emphasis on so many of our products being able to touch different segments of the industry. So whether it be, you know, backyard home renovation, but that total outdoor solution for your backyard, oh, I want to put in a deck, well, 
great. Here's the railing to match. Here's the decking. Here's the fasteners. Here's the lighting. Oh, here's a pergola. Here's a perimeter fence from that perspective. And then you get into commercial applications. We have products even used in the high security world from a fencing standpoint, like you might see around a data center yep. for security. I mean, you guys in the Pacific Northwest, there's a couple of big people up there that need lots of data centers. So think yeah, about that. I got this, I got this little <laughs> tiny company up the street called yeah. Intel yeah. from my office, you know. Right. So little guys, you know, they yeah. know a little bit about computers, but yeah, right. they, got, they got those things. Rings a bell, right? Yeah, right. I think yeah. I've heard of them. Yeah. 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 Same kind of thing, though. Right. And that's what's cool. Let's dive into steel decking as far as the framing is part of that, because this to me makes so much sense. So many people get hurt by wood deck framing failing just because it wasn't either put together right or it got rotten. You guys have that solution. And the way wood prices have been, sometimes the lesser cost solution because you don't have to have the brings truck to go buy the lumber. Yeah, yeah, that definitely was a benefit, especially during COVID, right? Where people yeah. were seeing the, the cost difference between a steel frame and a wood frame. It'd be very close. But what, what we see in the past is the lumber savings, but also just the piece of mind that comes with steel deck framing. So you're putting composite, PVC decking, alternative decking that's 25, 50 year warranties, and then you're putting a wood frame underneath that is going to rot and you have to lose how long. Right? Well, you talk about old, totally. wood, old wood versus new wood and just the change in that. And what people are seeing is like, why put all the investment on the top of the deck and ignore the underside of that deck, right? So with our steel framing, you're going to get a 25 year warranty with that. It's perfectly straight, right? Everything yeah. is the exact size. It's not like your lumber. And you get the benefit of the straight steel. Yeah. That's crazy. And here's why. And, and I've had this conversation on this show before many times. You know, oh, great. My decking's got a 50 year warranty. Cool. And you're putting pressure treated down it that might last 10 years. It's like taking a car and putting a 50 year warranty on a 100,000 mile you know, paint job yeah. on a car that's got 200,000 miles miles on it that you're going to get a, maybe a few more years out of it. doesn't make any sense. Right. And it's so much easier to work with. You know, lumber, you know, all right, this one's twisted. This one's kind of this dimension. And even the weight, even the weight of lumber. People right. think, oh, steel's heavy. But when you start getting into long, those long spans and beams, things of that nature with wood, I mean, it is, uh, the steel is actually going to be a lighter, easier product to install. So. Yeah, and it's so dimensionally stable. It you is. know what it's going to do. You know where it's going to move. Right. Not where it wood, it's like, oh, I, I got a hump now because this was twisted right. or something weird was going on. It's, you set it and forget yeah. it. Well, and what's also great for us, so, you know, when you think about the framing market, so, you know, our podcast podcast here predominantly for North America, correct? Sure. You know, yeah. But you look, really the global market outside of the U.S. So you see framing systems uh, in Australia, Africa, South Africa, you see Europe, where, where the, the resources aren't as plentiful, so you don't have the wood, all the, the forests, if you will. So it's commonplace in those other markets. So now what's great for us is really seeing this rapid adoption in North America, people yeah. recognizing the benefits of steel framing. And, you know, we could talk about the rotting, the warping, the twisting, all that, but truly what's really driving it home for contractors is saying I install this so much quicker I've got 20 foot spans so now I don't have the, I don't have the footers I don't have all the yeah. labor that comes with and says let me put this deck in now with labor shortages we've experienced over the past couple of years right yeah I can do this so much quicker we've got contractors you know the first question we always get is oh you know what's that cost compared to what right, right. Oh, what's the first cost and what we find in like we had a contractor do their own internal case study and said our deck difference between steel and wood, yeah. it's cost us 2% more to do steel because the labor savings is so immense that it is, it's the way we go. And we've got contractors that won't even, if, if someone wants wood, we'll walk from the job now. Why would you, steel. Why would you do wood then? I mean, honestly, <laughs> great, 2%? Great, a great question. Well, I mean, that's, okay, I'm going to go bring that up in the bar tap tonight with that 2% of <laughs> yeah. that. It's going to be, let's be right. honest. Right. What else is that contract? I mean, they're looking at is they're not going to have those callbacks. Right? Right. So there, there's a peace of mind from there that I'm going to install this and I'm not going to have to come back to this job. We've got, you know, we've got contractors, as Jeff just mentioned, that they're changing the way they do business. So me being the marketing guy, yeah. they're looking at, you know, they may have five, ten other contractors in their region. You know, yeah. a big city that all do timber tack tracks, some of the big net fortress decking. Yeah. Right. And so they're all doing composite BBC. Well, now they can differentiate themselves and saying, all right, well, we do all the, the high end stuff, but now we do steel framing and that's all we do. Right. That's awesome. So now right. they're setting themselves apart. And so it's definitely on that sense, like the contractors are really buying into that. And I'll tell a quick story. One of our uh, core contractors, Philip Purdy, is out in Colorado. He okay. only builds with steel framing. Nice. And one thing I love too, 
is how he communicates to the homeowner, right? Because homeowners are only thinking really about the decking and the railing. Right. Right. They don't really think about what goes underneath. Yeah. So talk about how to sell steel framing. One thing he does is he'll go to someone's house and he'll go underneath the deck and show the wood. And he'll, he'll show all the wood and he'll say, look, look at everything rotting. See the rot here? See this? Mm-hmm. By the way, you have steel on your deck. I'm like, what are you talking about? You see all the brackets? See all the nails? Look how they pretty look, they are. Look how good they look. Yeah. That is what your entire frame is going to look like, except obviously our look looks nicer because it's powder coated black. Yeah, it's beautiful. But it's going to last far more many years than right? your wood. So he goes and says, think of this steel. Your, your wood's falling apart. Your steel's not. Your entire frame is going to be this. And it clicks with homeowners. They, all right, I'm investing in something bigger and than just steel framing. I'm yeah. asking peace of mind that this deck is going to be standing for 25 to be years and not have to worry about all the maintenance. Yeah. Yes. I mean, we've got a lot of listeners here internationally in the show. Like, we're the top podcast in, in New Zealand, uh, Ireland, South Korea. We've got a bunch of different stuff out there for you listeners. So a lot of you guys are shaking your head going, what are you still using wood for, you idiots? But <laughs> it's, 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 it's seriously, I mean, right. why would you want to do that for that cost savings really it's it's not two percent more because of the value you get i mean think about having to replace that deck 10 years later because it's rotten and you got these oh i love the deck boards they're perfect but this framing's coming apart because of the rot whether it's the moisture or the heat or whatever it's happening well, it really so a couple things to look at right so we one we talk about that total fortress solution with all categories but yeah. it's important to remember we recognize that there's contractors that have preferences around around the globe our steel framing is designed with to work with any deck board it may be wood it may be composite it may be pvc it doesn't necessarily have to be ours and we recognize that and we respect it that's how it was developed for yeah. to be a component and a segment of the business that makes it safer quicker to install from that perspective um, but it is something that we we are just we're beyond excited about. When we think of the opportunity in this category; it's just immense, and, and it's great. We look at um, we're selling this product in Europe. We're getting ready to launch this product. Um, you said New Zealand, so yeah. we'll be we'll just say in the markets now in, in Australasia. We'll be launching here in the next uh, several weeks. Uh, Live news, stay tuned, guys. Yeah, yeah. 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 But so now we've got a brand presence with our products on six continents. Three or four of them actually is now going to be framing. Is this is really pushing globally as well outside of the U.S. and, and Canada. Yeah, so. yeah. It's think, great. I think also, and Jeff can speak as we were talking about this this morning, is we're talking a lot about residential homes on the, on the steel deck framing, but we're seeing huge opportunities on the commercial side. Yeah. You know, uh, Louis, it's Class A fire rating. Um, rooftop California. Decks. Yeah. Oh my gosh, all our yeah. California look at, look people. The on all of this, you know, if you look behind you, I don't yeah. know, you can see, you'll see the Cal State Fire Marshal stickers on but everything. See, that's right? it. I mean, right. I've got plenty of friends that are down in SoCal that are down there and they're like, okay, yeah. all right, I got to come up with something that's class A fire rated. And then they get into the debate of how am I going to do this? It's crazy. So let's talk about that. I mean, you guys, of course, like we we're talking about, you've got the total solution. If you're a, you know, 40% of our audience is, is remodelers and builders out there and designers. So for these people, they can actually come in and grab something and have a total solution for that whole project. Right. But for the people out there, like you said, that, hey, this is my angle. I always use these guys you guys also have the decking you've also got the 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 railing and stuff which is another key part of this whole system right Exactly. So while we've got that solution, we understand there's preferences. We respect that, right? There's industry leaders that have been here for years and there's people aligned. We get that. We see our products being able to play a role in virtually any build, whether it's the entire build or a component of that build. And that's what's exciting. And, you know, we look at the other things that we don't we don't spend enough time really talking about is, you know, Tim talked about how do we help contractors, right? How do we help them um, really differentiate themselves? And so it is that framing, you know, think about it. Am I doing a disservice to my customer because I'm only going to talk about a composite or a PVC board, but I don't want to talk about the frame because I'm worried they're going to say it's too expensive. I would go back and say, well, it's not A, but B, if you've done, if you've worked with a homeowner and you've got them converted from wood to a composite or PVC, you've done the hard work, right? Yeah. That's the biggest upcharge in a decade yeah, is going to this board. That's it. Now you're basically saying, I am recommending this to you as a homeowner, like, and they're looking at you as a trusted source to say, you know, hey, I, if you want wood, I could do it, but let me tell you why you want steel for a couple percent more, here is. Yeah, and, and here's the thing too, for me, if I'm building a wood deck, and I've learned this from friends of mine in the deck industry, 
the best practices for me, at least out on the West Coast, is they're taping that whole top surface right. to try to keep the water off the wood. Right. Well, you got a day of taping in there, getting that done right, rolled out right, everything else. Right. You're just set and forget. There is none of that extra waterproofing that you guys have to do exactly. just to try to make an extra life out of that whole thing. Right. Well, and it has, with our product to that point, I mean, it's a it's a G60 galvanization and it has an architectural grade powder coat, you know, and, and I know we're talking about the framing here, but it ties into our other products. So you look at our railing, for example. So we use the, uh, what we call a black sand finish. So that same black sand finish matches the railing to the framing. And one small part, another thing from a labor standpoint is I don't need to put fascia on anymore because consumers are looking at this and saying, wow, it's an aesthetic. It's actually a design aesthetic. I want to see the frame and look, it matches the railing. So it's a small design aspect for that build as well. And it's huge because now you've got steel there, which is as dirt it's going to be. Right. You don't have those weird transitions of how am I going to wrap my composite around to the face and make this look right, right, right. which is also another challenge. You can just let it be, put the railing on, it matches, right. everybody's happy, it looks like it was meant to be that way because right. it was, Right. and you're not trying to hide the ugly stuff down below. That's true. Yeah, and, and as we've grown this product line, we continue to expand and enhance this product. So we look at, uh, you know, right now we've got here today, we've launched our new five and a half inch square posts and new uh, eight inch square nominal posts that go with the system. And you can take that five and a half inch now up to 20 foot in length. So you want to do oh. a two story deck, you want to add a roof. Guess what? We've got that solution now. We're in the past as we launched that product. Hey, we're coming, we're coming. Well, we're there now. And it's just another aspect that allows a builder to differentiate themselves. I hate doing two story decks out of wood because that four by four that's max 16 feet up there, <laughs> right. that thing wants to get into its own shape. <laughs> it I'm like, this thing's going to look like a candy cane yeah. when I'm done it with it, right? It wasn't supposed to go, it wasn't a spiral. Right? Yeah, right, yeah. right? It's just, and you, and you look at it yeah. and something's moving. Right. That's why steel makes so much more sense because again, and that 20 foot is a huge deal. Right. That's awesome. Let's talk about lighting. Let's skip ahead a little bit because to me, that is the jewelry on a deck, right? You can get everything perfect. You got the most beautiful handrails, the decking's done. That lighting to me is probably one of the most important aesthetic things and safety things you can do on that deck. That's the thing when your friends come over at night and you got the barbecue going, they go, what is going on out here? Yeah, yeah, 100%. I mean, I think that's the the accessory item that sometimes gets overlooked at times, right? But it's the, it's the piece that when you build that deck, you're going to notice it the most, right? From a safety perspective, when you're sitting out at night, uh, my parents actually put a fortress deck rail and light on their house. And I, every time we go there at night, I'm like, I need this on my house. Like, just the lighting. But it is a, a piece. And, you know, look, from a contractor or a dealer, it's an opportunity to add that share wallet to the job. But not just because of the extra cost. It's just that it's a, it's going to give the overall experience of that outdoor experience. Right. That's what takes it that from that kind of entry level deck into that luxury by just adding lighting. It is, and you know, with the different types of lighting, whether it be post cab, whether it be down lighting, whether it be uh, on your stairs, you know, from a code perspective, a safety perspective, it's there. And you know, really, when you look at much of the, you know, many of the listeners of this podcast from a contractor perspective, I, we would encourage you. Every single job you should be trying to sell or pitching, adding lighting for that aspect. From a business perspective, why not make some extra gross margin? Why not make yep. some extra install dollars on that, on that deck? Every single deck you should be pitching lighting for the enhancement of not only your pocketbook, but the enhancement of the ambiance for the consumer. That consumer is going to look at that for years. Right. And, and today with technology, this isn't like 10 years ago with lighting right. where it was kind of new and there were issues and things right. like that. These days, oh my gosh, the lighting you can do and the places you can do lighting right. is stunning. Well, I think there are, sometimes you'll run in, you know, contractors at sometimes like, oh, I don't know if I want to pitch this. Am I going to scare the homeowner? Look, I want, we encourage people to look at it from the opposite perspective. If I'm a homeowner and I've put $30,000 into a deck and I knew that afterwards for $35,000, I could have had steel framing and I could have had lighting and you didn't pitch that to me, I'm actually going to be a little disappointed and say, geez, for 10, 12% more, I could have had lighting and steel framing. Why didn't you pitch it to me? Because you were afraid I would say no? Yeah. You did me a disservice. I already said <laughs> right? yes. Yeah, so let's, right. Why don't we just spend a little more and do yeah, it right? Exactly. So that way, 10 years, you're not out here going, hey, uh, yeah, are we going to tear down that work I did? 
Right. Yeah. But the deck had a 50-year warranty. Well, yeah, that top pretty side did. Yeah. The rest of the it, not side. so much, right? Yep. <laughs> That's great. And by the way, those big posts, talk about make a statement. I mean, right. th- there's function there, too. Right. Yeah. But, you know, for big spans. But they give that... They just give that seriousness to it, you know, and and I like that big, you know, it, yeah. When you're building a deck, I like having those big posts personally, because yeah. it just gives that mass. It makes it have that foundational view to it. And of course, you know, for code reasons and structural reasons, it's there as well. Right. But I do like that. It's it's been, a, it makes a statement. Yeah, it's yeah. also been the number number one request from our contractors out there with steel framing are those larger posts and. Yeah, we're, we're they're available. They're coming out, and it's it, that's one thing that we we strive to work on is is to continue listening to our builders and our contractors. Right, steel framing for the last couple of years has really taken off. Right, you're seeing competitors get into this alternative framing opportunity. Right, they're seeing we we own the deck, we own the rail, everything above, and now all of a sudden there's an opportunity underneath the deck yeah. in that frame and so we want to stay ahead of that so we've got builders and contractors who are giving us feedback they're building our steel framing decks every day yeah right and they're saying you know these are the type of jobs i'm doing and the, this is what i need if, if, if i'm transitioning from wood to steel i have to have this this and this right we need to solve this problem and our team our innovation team our product team has done a great job of taking that feedback figuring out solutions they're not only solutions for them, but also meet the code requirements that... That's that always we, moving. Yeah, that yeah. we expect that you're going to get from Fortress, right? So there's a whole other uh, innovation aspect to that to make sure you're hitting that and above and beyond what we want to hit. Yeah. And that takes some time, but you see that relationship with these contractors, especially the ones that are forward thinking, yeah. right, and moving into these alternative framing, it's really changing the way the industry builds decks. Exactly. So. Let's step aside here and talk these pergolas. Those are gorgeous as well. And again, not made of wood. Yeah. It's literally same components you take in steel framing now instead of using it as underneath now you're looking at it overhead so um, it, we've got we've got great opportunities with the with pergolas we've seen that market continue to grow just like with covid the entire outdoor space pergolas have, you know pergolas have been strong in many markets throughout well north america but globally for years yeah. but we, we've seen just like all of outdoors accelerate during um, the past three years but you look at that when we take pergolas take that same material that you're making with framing it now allows you to even enhance that build and say I talked earlier I said well you've got framing in black sand now yep. you've got the railing to match it well guess what now you can integrate a pergola is it an arbor over a kitchen an next outdoor kitchen right. or is it a standalone pergola elsewhere um, and we're really driving with some new innovations some new uh, new pieces to really make them stand out as well but it is something exciting for us we've always been able to build we've had contractors from day one taking our framing components and making custom pergolas yep. well we've launched now over the past couple of months pergola kit so a single skew everything you need for a 12 by 12 pergola um, for example we've got three different sizes that, yeah pre-cut pre-drilled one skew you open it up it's a let's call it a three by three bundle everything you need to build that pergola right now so, dude that yeah. is amazing it and is. there's no thought to it you're just going to follow the directions put it together <laughs> it's made to go that way 100 yeah. percent. so as yeah. jeff mentioned like we've had contractors using uh, steel framing to build pergolas for years right and so we call that kind of the limitless design options yeah. and a lot of what we're showing today is a lot of new parts and pieces right if you want that modern pergola right you want a more traditional pergola now we've got these other pieces to help them build whatever they want yeah or you've got the homeowner or maybe that diy or that's like well i just want you know a 12 by 12 or a 8 by 10 great we've got three sizes of kits yeah. that we offer they're pre-cut and now we can offer those to homeowners to contractors who want to put up a quick pergola and but you still get the quality of the evolution system and there's nothing much more DIY friendly for somebody to put that together, <laughs> right? right? For I mean, sure. it's it's yeah. no different than going to that uh, Swedish box store and <laughs> yeah. putting things together. Right. You just have to assemble it. Uh-huh. You're not getting the saw out. You're not getting the stuff exactly. out. Exactly. Exactly. You know? I'm not allowed to touch those type of tools. I, I can build a. <laughs> See, <laughs> there you go. I put a drill in my hand, and you know something's gonna happen. <laughs> 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 I can put together. A Ah, see, there you go. But that's yeah. what's smart about that. For the, There's all these people yep. out there, hey, I can afford to put the pergola kit in, but I can't pay the contractor to right. do it. There's still a solution for them. Right. And you, and you look at, really, when you start looking at pergolas, you start getting into 8x8, 10x10 cedar posts. 
So from a cost perspective, the steel, we can actually see steel pergolas installed at a lower cost than certain species of wood. So it, it, it's not all about cost. It's about that ease of installation. It's about that ongoing maintenance that says, man, I'm looking at this pergola. It looks great. I stained it. Oh, wait, it's a year later. I've got to stain it again. And we're saying, guess what? You don't. Yeah. And what's worse, though, is if you've got those beautiful vines because you're trying to grow something across the right. top. You've, you've got to paint it. You've stained it. They've grown. Everything's good. Right. And now you're like, how am I going to do this with plants on it? I can't finish this exactly. now. <laughs> yeah. And then you got a hot mass. Right. 100%. And so. so that's where that really pays off because you can just, again, like we talked about, set it and forget it. And you've got multiple styles there, right. too. You can kind of lean this into traditional. It's not just people go, oh, steel, contemporary. Right. That's not always the case. Multi-material, right? Different yeah. types of material. We're showing off uh, some cedar kind of cladding, and we got these these new cladding clips that are low profile that allow you to attach different type of boards and give you that more modern, almost Japanese feel to like it, right? Mixed material look, yeah. whether it be on the side or even on the top of the pergola. And we're seeing, I was in Austin, Texas, visiting a, a build, and it was a homeowner doing it, and he did a mixed material, and it looks it looks incredible. Yeah, so it, it opens up a lot of opportunities there from well, a design and, perspective. And sometimes you're in a in a tight space. Many homes out there, you know, new developments where you know there's eight, ten feet between the house. Right. You want to put the pergola up, but you're like, hey, I'm tired of Mrs. Smith next door watching me every time I'm out there on the barbecue. I want to kind of shield it a little bit. Yeah. Tim usually says he'd rather you watch him in the shower. So yeah. I get exactly. Yeah. What yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, 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 there we go. House and we have no shades right now. So like our neighbors are texting me all the time being like hey what are you what are you doing over there and I'm like, yeah yeah we need to get those shades back. yeah i know it's uh, i got the same issue downstairs we don't have shades on it either because i'm out in the woods but i feel bad for my neighbors have to drive down the flag lot behind me sometimes i'm like oh sorry guys <laughs> that's awesome so what else do you have here at the show that you guys are premiering as far as new stuff let's talk new stuff here for a minute and uh talk about that because that's what people come here for, right? right. Is yeah. they're, they're looking for that new stuff. So, I mean, we touched on quite a few on the Evolution yeah. frame and pergolas. I would say um, FE26, which is our steel railing line. We've got a new mm -hmm. infill option called Access. It's a horizontal steel railing. Ooh. So a very modern yeah. look, right? That's very on trend right now. You're seeing it. You go online and look for modern rail, like you're starting to see this more custom made. Yeah. Well, now we offer it in our FE26 line. So nice. it's a panelized system. Right, so much quicker install, and you know, you'll talk a little bit more about that from a sales perspective. But it's 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 taken off. Like people are seeing this and being like, "This is amazing." And a lot of the times when you get those horizontal steel rail lines, it's a more custom look, right? So you're looking yeah. at a lot of labor, a lot yes. of cost. Right. Well, now we've simplified that process, but still giving you the fantastic modern look. It seemed forever you'd have you had two choices, right? You had glass or cable, right? Or you had something that was kind of a more traditional look and that was kind of the three boxes you checked but right. that look is so contemporary so just custom built like you said right. it's a brilliant way when it, it, it applies to not only residential but commercial mm -hmm. uh, but we look at one of the things that we're excited about too with this infill option just like our standard fe26 is we've got posts with pre-attached brackets so talking about when we talk yeah. about hey here's the benefits too it may be different for a homeowner than it is from a contractor but from an install standpoint how do we take and we appreciate custom fabricators beautiful work right yeah but what we can do is we can mass produce something with a automotive quality finish Mm -hmm. And we can help you with speed of installation. And so a pre-attached a post with pre-attached brackets. Dude. Now it's not getting out there doing measurements yeah. to see where my brackets go. I set my posts, hang my panels, and I save four to five hours on an install because my brackets are already pre-attached. And then because this is metal, the worst part of it is that if you didn't have those, the contractor that goes, man, I was just thinking about going to lunch and I, I need two more posts because I drilled that one wrong, right? right? Exactly. Because they're yeah. like, oh, what was I thinking, yeah. you know? I was, I was talking about, I about a month ago and the majority of their work is custom fabrication, yeah. right? So high end, everything custom fabrication. The only railing they offer outside of that is Fortress. And the reason why is at 26, because they'll go to their homeowners and if their price range is not up to a custom fabrication, sure. they go to Fortress and say, you're going to get the same look the same quality of a custom fabrication, but yet the labor savings, with what Jeff just saw, pre-attached brackets, the panelized yeah. system, your cost is gonna drop to this. And it's the only railing that they'll sell, and it's why they're so committed to Fortress. But it's, they compare it on par to a custom fabrication, 
and you're just saving on all the labor costs and homeowners are, are, are jumping at it all day long. Well, that's where it makes sense for the homeowner, right? right? You're saving labor, so now you're bringing something more into budget for whether you're a DIY or homeowner, whatever you're doing. Right. Now it's sliding more into their budget because quite frankly, if somebody's out there building for you and you're saving time, yeah, that's money. Well, and you know, so we, we, I think a lot of times we default to talking about railing, but the same thing applies in our with our fence products. So we have, yes. three, you know, to, a completely assembled product versus a fabricator, which again, beautiful work. And working with fabricators, we'll often talk about, hey, make that grand entryway. Put your, put your signature on it. Make it beautiful. But when you're running a straight line, when you're doing the backyard, you're doing the perimeter, use that pre-assembled panel to cut down on the labor, cut down on the install time um, from that perspective. And, you know, you look at it from a coding perspective. We talked about that earlier as yeah. well. Why does that matter? So it matters because we have an e-coat and an architectural grade powder coat on our, on our steel product. Mm-hmm. So if you look at that, that is, I talk, I talk about an automotive finish, that's where that come from, comes yeah. from. So the e-coating systems really were developed um, with the automotive industry back in the 70s. If anybody yeah. lives in the north, think about the salt on the roadways, oh, the cars, absolutely. right? Uh, yep. Car guy, car guy, car guy rusting yep. out, rusting out from that oh, perspective. Man. And so that's why e-coat was developed. And really taking that and applying it to our steel railings gives people and our fence peace of mind and saying, well, it is different than, again, no knock on a fabricator. A fabricator may do something beautiful and put it in a powder coat line, but that's a different process than adding e-coat in different layers, a seven, seven to 11 layer coating that we're putting on our products. Yeah, I mean, and you're right. There's no, comp- even the custom guys, and again, nothing against those guys, right. that finish just isn't what Right. You're putting on there, period. Right, and we've had, and so it like depending, you know, regionally, right? People have have material preferences. Sure. In products, will oftentimes people say, oh, you know, the Northeast, for example, steel. Oh, I don't like steel; it rusts. Well, guess what? Thirty years ago, when somebody welds on site and uses a can of spray paint, guess what? It's gonna rust. Hundred percent. But when you, you mass manufacture in a controlled environment, a factory that has e coat, architecture grade, all of this, guess what? It's not going to. Yeah, and and that's the, and even worse, the guy with the spray can. <laughs> Right, I've seen that a hundred times. Yeah. You know, there, I get a beautiful steel staircase that's being built in place. They're welding in place. Yeah. It's all done, and the guys in there going with an airbrush. I'm like, <laughs> well, there goes that finish. Right. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Yeah. And that's what the clients paid for. But right. One thing I like to say is, for that reason, custom is not always better. Right. Custom is a process of building and not a grade of material. Right. Custom means, hey, I've got a, I got to come up with a solution that no one's making and I'm forced to go custom or I want it built my way. But that doesn't mean it's better than everything else that's manufactured. It, it means you're talented. It yes. means you've got skill and more power to you. I mean, I look at some of, we look at some of the products that are out there, projects like, my goodness, I mean, that is Beautiful. a craftsman, an artisan. It truly yes. is craftsmanship and artisan. But to your point, it's a way of building. It's not the material itself, right? Exactly, so. exactly. We can't not talk about decking products. Right. We've talked about all this beautiful metal, right? right? Let's talk about the piece that most homeowners look at and go, I want my deck to look like this. Right. And that's that hyper focus. They hold the sample up and go, build this. Right. It's the part that we see, but it's the part that's really important as well. You gotta put something quality down there. I mean, I remember, funny story, my, my mom 15 years ago, my mom and dad's house in Eastern Washington, they put one of the first, and I'll use, well, let's say it was starts with a T, we'll just let that product go. And it was a fencing Is product. Is it like a dinosaur? Yes, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And the problem was, this was first gen, and we probably should have just fought it back then, but it looks like in the sun that that fence was made out of silly putty. Every, it's worse than wood, but it was that first generation material. So it's the fencing product? It's that old fencing right. product that went out for a yeah. little bit and they went, wow, this is a bad idea. Right. We tried to do something that was long term and it was like, ah, oh yeah, that's not working. Right. Not capped, not, you know, just all the, you know, My, it's, it's the particle plastic board it looks so like. So it's funny, that's actually how... Um, 
two, that, that's basically what led me to Fortress. Is be, prior to Fortress, um, I worked uh, in the composites industry for a composite fence manufacturer. And I, so I, we'll just say I know what you're talking about because it was uh, identified and capitalized upon quite a bit. But yeah. it is, uh, you know, technology, and, and it's not taking away from them, right? No, because not at all. Technology has evolved. I mean, you talk about Intel. I mean, look, every four years, sp- their processor speed double or uh, something. I don't know what the exact calculation uh, is. Look at this iPhone yeah. that Apple keeps <laughs> getting me every you two can years. Have more with. technology than going to the moon, right? Is what right. they say in the space yeah. show. So, the, the, just you know, from that perspective, everyone goes through. You know, can go through different learning curves as they enha- as they uh, grow their products. Every and product that, does right? that exactly. So every product. But yeah, we uh, so it's interesting you start with fence because we also offer a full line of composite fence products. So we yep. have um, a product called Oasis, which is a, a stick built product. So if you are used to building wood stick built fence, whether it be a side by side, board on board, using the same nail gun, everything you're doing, you install our product um, from that perspective. We also have our Evolver, which is a horizontal product um, as well. That but is sexy to me. It is. I'm sorry. Are you I talking saw about that? me or the Evolver? <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, you got a good beard, man. <laughs> I, I got to say, Cargo had a beard. You got it going. So. <laughs> yeah, no, that Evolver has been great for us. It's got an octagonal post, so a little design aspect to yeah. it as well. So it's really been very good for us. But that Oasis, not only does that Oasis work as a standalone stick built fence, we have a product called Estate, which is a hybrid of ornamental iron and privacy. So yeah. it it's an ornamental product in which you can add wood or you can add our Oasis pickets mm-hmm. to give a high-end privacy look. Many people will use that even for screening. So whether it be residential or commercial, it says, hey, I've got ornamental around my perimeter fence, but I want to screen or hide my ACs, my pool pumps, something along those my lines. My hot tub, right? Yeah, my hot tub, right? <laughs> so and now it's just an accent piece or some accent panels that match with the overall ornamental look, but with the longevity of composite as well. And we do one last thing just to throw in is that estate we've actually made. We talked about the pergola kits. Yeah. We now offer an estate enclosure kit for single and double dumpsters. One skew. Oh my gosh. Everything you need to put in a single double, single dumpster or double dumpster, including bollards, everything you need to build that. And that's important for us to really get that get that out there because there's so many times contractors, architects, builders, are like, what is the solution I have? I guess I can do masonry, I say this. Other than that, I don't know what to do. So here's a solution served on a platter. See, yeah. that, we'll have to, that might be a DIY project for me because my <laughs> house, I mean, I, I look at the street. It's a fairly busy street, but I got my two yard bins. Yeah. I got the trash bin, the recycle bin, and the glass bin. Yeah. And the glass bin's the one I'm trying to hide because I don't want to see how many bottles are in that glass bin every week. <laughs> yeah. That's when the neighbors start to judge and go, are you just putting that? You were busy last week. But One of those in weeks. Your defense, there's some good breweries up in your neck. Of the absolutely, woods. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what I mean. It's, yeah. it's it's nice to be able to hide that stuff and get it from the the side of the garage, even from right. a homeowner perspective. Let's yep. take out the the light commercial or whatever. But even from the homeowner's perspective, to be able to put that stuff away and hide it, and so you're not. It, one of the TVs, I think it's a commercial out there where they're making fun of the new homeowner washing his trash cans. Right. No, put them in an enclosure. You're not out there making them look exactly. good. They're exactly. not meant there. And it is, so, you know, the residential, but the commercial, you know, again, talking about that commercial, but people looking for solutions. So instead of an architect saying, I need to find, or, or a general contractor or a property owner, I need to now go find a manufacturer for decking. I need to find a manufacturer for railing, a manufacturer for this, this, and this, a pergola. We come in and say, here, we're your single source. Everything you need, here's your cladding, here's your decking, here's your steel frame, here's an, uh, a garbage dumpster enclosure, here's pergolas. So we're working on multiple uh, multifamily projects right now where it's, here's your garbage dumpsters, here are your, uh, here's the railing, here is, you know, from that perspective, we're trying to make it simple all-encompassing for the homeowner and the commercial project. Well, let's talk commercial for just a second. I mean, I can't tell you how many times, you know, I'm in the Portland, Oregon area, so we get rain in that winter time that just destroys stuff. And I, right. it's, I go by the multifamily apartments that have the outside decks, and every 10 years, they've got scaffolding up, they're ripping out all that wood that's coming out of the yep. side, and I'm like, what are you guys doing? Right. You know, that should be steel, and they're gonna get decades out of that compared to, you know, because no offense apartment people, it's not always taken care of the best out there. It's not being maintained a lot of times. Some people, they have that outdoor patio and that door gets open when they inspect it and it doesn't go back out until they're done. But again, that commercial stuff makes a lot of sense just on the durability standpoint. It is. So 
and Tim, sorry, I feel like I'm talking a lot here. Um, but the, even from a commercial perspective, to your point, we get that there's different types of builders, right? There's somebody who wants to build and turn that project or a builder that wants to hold it. And if you're a builder that truly wants to hold properties, there is, you need to be thinking about the amortization, thinking about that, lo- that life, that longevity. So why would I put in wood decking when I've got composite? Why would I put in, um, you know, why am I going to have a fabricator? Because right, right now, today, maybe it's a couple percent less to have a fabricator come out and weld my fence or my railing on site and then paint it. Well, guess what's going to happen in three years? You're going to have them back repainting that versus let's put in a, this system that's engineered yep. and manufactured for, for, uh, for um, long yeah. Length of install. Yeah, I exactly. Just set it and forget it. Yeah. And, you know, it's 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 the conversation we have. I'll, I'll do a lot of shows. We do one or two a year for people that are, you know, wanting multifamily stuff. Maybe they're they're buying a, as an income property, maybe, a you know, a duplex or a right. quadplex or something like that. Again, those are the things where you need to spend that money. It's not more. You're actually spending the right amount of money. And long term, it's a it's a thoughtless math to figure that out where that yeah. where it comes back at you. And even with... You know, single family builders, you look at a uh, housing subdivision, right? So somebody drives up to the housing subdivision, if they see it and it takes you three or four years to build that subdivision, oh, I'm just going to put wood fence around this subdivision. By year two, that homeowner or that potential homeowner is driving up there. It's like, ooh, do they even take care of things? This It's, it's gray. It's not. Yeah. So it, it's, it's, I mean, it's that perception as well. And it's great for contractors to know about the commercial aspect of Fortress, even if they're residential, because it's that peace of mind to a homeowner that says, look, we're putting this in residential, but they're even doing so much commercial. Imagine the touch, the feel, the longevity for commercial is now applying to your residential project. Absolutely. And I think like, for instance, you know, you've got those uh, composite panels. Those can be great fencing as well, especially if you've got road noise and things like that. There yeah. is some, there's some properties there that do help yes. send the neighbor, send it over to the neighbors. Sorry, neighbors, but yeah. at least it's, <laughs> yes. you know, you can actually bounce the sound a little bit with that right. stuff too. It's not like it's concrete, but right. there's enough mass to it. I've noticed that it can make a noticeable difference mm-hmm. on noise. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you asked about decking. Tim, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about our decking solution, our cladding solution. Yeah, from yeah that let's get into so that. We offer two, two types of decking, right? Composite and a PVC decking. Yeah. Um, I, I'll talk specifically more about our PVC, which is our Apex line of decking. Yeah. That's actually the decking my parents put on it. I love it. It's, yeah. it's one of the more natural looking deckings out there. Um, the feel of it is incredible. So it's it's capped twice, right? And they actually tear oh, cool. off as they hand scrape at the top layer of that cap. It gives a, a much oh. deeper texture than most of the other PVC. Oh, one, they have that there. kind of just light embossed, and you look at it and go, "Well, you know, yeah, you, there's no depth to it." But okay, I and, see what you're trying to do, and you can feel it. Like, like yeah. you walk around on the deck, and, and I think I was talking to Bill, who's one of our. He's been in the decking industry for years, and he was saying yesterday that they've done testing in Europe on like slip resistance, and our Apex decking is very similar to putting like the. Uh, sorry, like the, hey, thanks, IQ yeah, tools. Our booth, our booth location. It's, uh, it's all good. So it's ambiance. Very, ambiance. It's very similar to putting that, that, that black uh, material down on stairs that, mm-hmm. for slip resistance, and it, it just comes natural with the way that that decking is manufactured. So with our decking, yeah. you can also use it for cladding, yeah. right, cladding applications. That and, is so huge right now with cladding. Yeah. You know, put in that accent stuff. You know, you've got right. the... The, the black or charcoal house and you put the light cladding with the horizontal yeah. texture or something on it. It's huge in the contemporary and of right. course commercial has been doing it for years. Yeah, it's great. Well, one thing too, and I want to touch on this because it's something that we have out on the West Coast, especially on the coastal areas that get a lot of rain, for instance, and I'm sure you see it in other parts of the country as well. But specifically for us, when we get through those winter months of rain after rain after rain, everything has this like slippery, mossy haze to it and without that texture on a deck when it's those ones that have that really light texture you walk out on it after it being out there before you've had a chance to clean it it's like an ice skating rink and that texture makes a huge difference on slip resistance coming from into that springtime or when you're going outside hey i'm just going to go out to the hot tub because it's snowing out here i'm going to enjoy it right that texture can make a huge difference in that yeah you know, say you talk about safety earlier with lighting, right? Yeah. So it's an opportunity on the safety side of the uh, 
Yeah, that's key. Yeah, and so that is that R13, which is the European floor uh, slip resistance. Yeah. And so you think about not only that, but as we continue to see like aging and the certified aging in place with you know all these different Absolutely. things, right? So we've got this aging gener these generations that you know it's an opportunity for them. You know, hey, I want something that I'm not going to slip on. I, like Ken, I don't know if I share this or not, but I slipped the first time in my life today. I slipped in the bathtub and I caught myself. Oh, and it's like, but I think about you know from a deck perspective exterior where you've got moisture, you've got rain, you've got all mm -hmm. do all these different things. So having that R13 slip rating is great for even that anyone but certified aging in place where you start paying I'm not saying it's a certified but you no, know what but I'm saying it's, it's, it's think smart. about that as we're building homes now from that perspective thinking about using that as an aspect for someone who might be aging, right? Well, and right now, multi-generational housing is right. huge. We all know that. We've been talking about it for a while, especially with everything from the, the younger people that can't find affordable housing to your grandparents. Right. You're like, well, hey, they, they're they going to fight me if they go into the retirement village right now. <laughs> There's no way, but they're going to be hanging out with us for a few years, yeah. you know? And so you're trying to find that happy medium and you get that. You get something that's beautiful, Right. and safe, which is kind of the win for everybody. Right. Yeah, and so the green pattern too, so, and Tim touched on this a little bit, but I, you know, we're obviously gonna be a little biased, but having come from my background in composites before exactly. coming to Fortress, I will tell you, that green pattern truly is the most realistic wood, really wood look that I yeah. have seen on a non-wood board. It, I mean, it, it truly is made. That apex decking is is, is great. Yeah, so. the the pictures you can't you can't capture it in the in the graphics as yeah. with any kind of camera. But when you feel it, oh. you can definitely see this is a different made product than everybody right. else is doing. Yeah. So what have we not touched on today, guys? We talked about. Tim wanting to shower for his neighbors. Um, yep. so we've got that. We covered. talked about you falling in the bathtub <laughs> yeah, almost. In the bathtub. Good save. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think you, I don't even expand on maybe some of the other railing, Tim. I mean, it, so it's yeah. not just steel railing. Uh, you know, whether it be cable, whether it be aluminum, whether it be glass, having that total solution of railing as well from residential. And I keep touching on that commercial, but you look at um, our FE26 Plus, for example, is rated to unlimited height. So if you had a 200 story building I mean, fine I'm not, I'm not seeing many you know but no, you but get a 200 story building there, yeah. it, will, it meets code to be on that 200 story and yeah and it's important you know so much goes into code compliance and code testing it's mm -hmm. uh, that's something else for contractors and for homeowners to be concerned about that says hey these products meet code what if i put in this product oh maybe it costs a little bit less and then Two weeks later, it's like, oh, it's red tagged. You can't use it because it doesn't meet code. So we yeah. spend a lot of time and focus on code for all of our products, um, including the rail loops. Yeah, and to, to that, Ryan, it, a picture was just sent to me yesterday with our aluminum AL13 Plus, okay. which is our residential and commercial. Mm -hmm. So it, it is rated for commercial applications. Um, someone put it on their home in a massive tree, I think actually up in your region. Yeah. It was up in Washington. Um, a massive tree fell on the deck, and the aluminum railing saved the entire deck. The tree landed, Get out. landed <laughs> on the AL13 Plus, or aluminum commercial, yeah. and saved the entire deck. And that, that builder went out and looked at it. They have, the, they have to obviously swap out a few panels, but the posts are still straight. The posts are straight, and, the, and the deck out. itself. And the homeowner's like, this is the only thing that saved us from redoing this massive deck. And so, well, yeah, a wood yeah. railing on that would have been chopsticks, right? right? Yeah. I mean, it would have just, it would have just not even known it was there, and it would have gone right through it. Right. And those are the things that I think you, it, you can't really plan for, right? But it's, sure. it's you, you choose between different products. You may find a product that's cheaper. It may look very similar, right? Because from the design aesthetics, but are you, you taking a shortcut that things happen that you're not really aware of or you can't plan for? Be protected, right? Go with the brand, the company that is going to stand behind their product. Yep. Right? We innovate and we build and we want it to last. Yeah. Every, that's why we got into steel framing. Right? Yeah. Well, All I'm of our other products are built to last and, and steel framing is that piece that is 98% steel wood. Well, now we're changing that, right? Yeah. And, and you're seeing it. You can walk around this show. You do see alternative framing solutions yeah. a lot more than you saw last year. I so. think in five years, if I'm going to make a prediction, and it's not because I'm sitting in your booth, I think wood framing is going to become the alternative right? just because this makes so much more sense. I, really I mean, that. right? <laughs> yeah, no, we, we agree. I mean, we, uh, we, we truly do. I mean, we spent... 
about seven years of really doing research on the product, traveling. I don't. I talk about international, so traveling to international markets, traveling throughout North America, and really getting feedback on how we make that system. Um, you know, ma- mass appeal for that system, and so we've really put that work into it. And we do believe, like yourself, glad to have you in the uh, the Steel Nation camp there. That yeah. we we truly believe it is a it's a game changer for the industry and will become the norm uh, in the not too distant future. So. Absolutely, that's important about that is. And Jeff alluded to it. Like our team did a lot of work to build a system that allows contractors to build like they were with wood. And yes. not only that, but every part and piece is fortress down to the screws, the brackets. Um, nice. Every panel, right? Everything goes to Joyce. Everything goes together. It's all fortress. And we have the complete system when it comes to the evolution framing system. You don't have to get parts and pieces from other manufacturers to, to put it together. And it's, we're going to warranty. We're going to stand by our product. Yeah. And you can, we talk about ease of buying, right? Jeff talked about how easy it is to buy, right? Well, now you just, you go and you buy everything from fortress from that framing. And it builds like wood. And actually, we talk about it, it builds quicker. Once you install no a couple, question. Of them, people are actually installing it quicker than they would a wood frame. So Any contract out there, if they're building that deck right, is spending hours getting that plane for all those deck joists yeah. matched, right? I mean, you, uh, how many people do you watch now on, on Instagram? The challenge? Sl- the, yeah. the level challenge the level that my challenge. buddy started, yeah. you know. <laughs> and, yeah, how many and, of them are at steel framing? Yeah. yeah. They're, 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 because it's going to be perfectly straight. It's going to be, that's the time. easy button with steel oh, yeah. framing. Otherwise, they're spending, you know, hours of time, and which is either you're doing it as a homeowner, you're spending hours to do it, or paying someone to do it right. just to get it there. And that's where that makes the most sense, guys. It yeah. just really does. Well, man, thanks, guys. Thanks for taking the time today. This has been great. And uh, I know yeah, our audience you. out there really appreciates learning more about steel stuff like this because that's really the wave of the future. And uh, anything that lasts longer, saves them money in the long run kind of simple that way 100 percent, yeah and we you know so we appreciate you having us and for all the listeners out there reach us at fortressbp.com yep. uh, we'll have local representatives we can have our internal team whether it be specifications like we can help you with that project if you're thinking how do i try steel framing for example let us help you on that journey uh because it is don't be intimidated by it truly is it, you know people think new products uh, i'm not sure because the first time you do something new usually it's like this is what I see. That this is. I only notice what's different. Like, yeah. but, but that second and third install, it's like, wow, this is great. You get to that third install, it's, I get it. It is faster than wood. My tools aren't really different. I mean, I might have one. I have a different saw, and that's it. Everything else is working the same. So, amen. All right, guys, thanks for coming in, and uh, can't wait till next year to see what you guys have coming out as well. All right, have a great day. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, guys, thanks, and I'm Eric G, and you've been listening to Around the House. Anywhere beyond the mean Life is a love song, let's be lovers We're all over the radio Take my hand, I know where to go All over the radio with you Hey, it's Eric G from Around the House. Are you planning a decking or siding project this year? If you are, you've got to check out my friends at Millboard. Millboard is a completely different kind of composite decking and cladding that enhances outdoor spaces with enduring distinction. Hand molded from the finest oak, it realistically mimics the natural grain and color of premium hardwood. If you're looking for something that doesn't look like plastic and instead real wood, check out Millboard.com. Make sure and check out that interview we did just a few weeks back. That's Millboard.com.